Chapter 3. Types of Performance Management Performance Appraisal Terms versus Their Real Meaning Performance Appraisal. How to Reward, Recognize, and Encourage Strong Performance The first thing that usually comes to mind as ways to reward and motivate good performance is financial rewards such as bonuses and merit increases. But if financial rewards are unavailable or limited, business owners start wondering what to turn to. This is when they start asking themselves questions like 1. How exactly can I motivate my employees to do excellent work? 2. How can I demonstrate my recognition of strong and impressive performers with rewards that ensure they all remain engaged and focused toward the greater good of the organization? In-depth research reveals that past a certain threshold, using money as a reward for outstanding performance at work may have the opposite effect on your team since it is an extrinsic reward. Obviously, well-compensated employees will perform better than underpaid ones, but intrinsic rewards are considered the most powerful motivators. Beyond a paycheck, the utmost satisfaction of making meaningful progress toward accomplishing significant objectives and its personal enjoyment are proven long-term motivation drivers. Research also shows that solid performers are more likely to be motivated with greater authority, support for advancement, coaching, and feedback. Here are some specific ways to keep them motivated. Affirm the performance of solid performers, and ensure job satisfaction. 1. Coaching and feedback One of the most significant performance drivers is regular feedback. This is how employers help employees progress toward their priorities and goals daily. When coaching and feedback help individuals make meaningful progress, it creates engagement and motivation. Therefore, coaching and feedback should address negative and positive behaviors at different periods. Be as specific as possible about behaviors. Explain why a specific behavior was ineffective or effective. Describe the specific situation, the resulting behavior, and the overall impact of the behavior on progress toward goal accomplishment. Therefore, you can ask yourself these questions. 1. What kind of review or feedback do I give my employees? 2. How often do I give that feedback? How do I know if the feedback is effective or ineffective? 3. How do I know my feedback is timely, fair, and specific? 4. How often do I discuss overall performance and provide feedback to staff and faculty? 1. Stretch assignments setting meaningful objectives and making tangible progress toward them evokes engagement and feelings of satisfaction. It can also be very motivating. This is why you should talk with every employee to find out their professional interests. The goal is to work with them to create challenging goals that align with the employee's professional interests. Meaningful and challenging goals will require employees to tap into their internal motivations to accomplish their goals. So, ask yourself the following questions. 1. What exactly do my employees find most fulfilling and challenging about their work? 2. Is there anything I am doing to assist ambitious and talented employees in remaining satisfied and challenged at work? 1. Greater authority grants staff and faculty the authority they need to ensure successful work. Trusted employees who can make highly impactful decisions will always respond with better engagement and performance. Ask these questions. 1. How do I delegate challenging work and grant employees the power to complete the work? 2. How can I swiftly drive decision-making into lower levels in my unit? 3. How do I know whether or not employees understand the type of decisions that they can make? 1. Flexibility This can serve as an excellent reward for jobs well performed. Many employees now expect flexibility from their employers. The first thing you should do is consider the position's specific needs. For instance, some positions require workers to be at a specific location or time. But if the work permits, and the employee meets expectations, the opportunity to work outside of the regular office or business hours can be motivating and rewarding. 1. How can I allow my workers to focus on their work at the same place and time where they can be most productive? 2. How can I provide more support to my employees who have family and personal matters to attend to? 
1. Career planning and support employees need to develop and grow in their jobs and even grow beyond them to remain productive and motivated. It is essential to get to know every employee on a personal level. Ask each one of them their goals in life and work, as well as the type of rewards they prefer or find meaningful. You can ask the following questions that enable you to understand their objectives. These questions will give you lots of ideas on how you can support each of them. 1. How do I support the career development of employees? What do they need to do to advance? 2. Have I discussed with my employees their utmost desire for development and career advancement and the numerous opportunities that exist? Ask employees the following question. 1. Where exactly do you see yourself in three years? 2. What do you look forward to each time you report for work every day? What do you find most fulfilling and challenging in your work? 3. What other avenues of learning, such as self-directed options, skill development, mentors, cross-training, or stretch projects, could be used as development resources? 4. What are some of the barriers, obstacles that prevent you from being much more successful? 5. How can I allow you to focus more on your work at the place and time where you can be much more productive? 1. Recognize excellent work Recognizing your staff and faculty shouldn't be a one-size-fits-all process. Find out how each of your employees would love to be recognized. Some employees prefer public recognition, while others are more comfortable receiving praise on a personalized note or during one-to-one -one conversations. Regardless, it would help if you made it a daily or weekly practice to affirm good work to encourage more good work. Remember that staff and faculty who feel valued are more productive, engaged, and committed. Types of motivation There are two significant types of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic motivation is internal. It usually involves having a core, personal desire to beat a challenge, interact with only team members you like and trust, and produce very high-quality work. Intrinsically motivated individuals obtain much enjoyment and satisfaction from what they do. Extrinsic motivation involves using external forces to encourage team members to do what they want. Some examples of extrinsic motivators include bonus checks, time off, pay raises, as well as the threat of job loss. Extrinsic motivation can be positive or negative, depending significantly on the circumstance. Each team member is different and will most likely have different motivators. This is why it is crucial to get to know your team members or workforce. Find out what motivates them. Ensure you have an excellent mix of intrinsic and extrinsic motivators so that you can motivate team members accordingly and successfully. How to improve the performance management process The performance management process can be time-consuming as managers rummage through old emails to inform the assessment. Those who have worked at a startup will affirm that a young and eager CEO may have established a comprehensive 3G zero degree employee review, which requires every individual to spend several days developing detailed evaluations of people in every area of the organization. In the meantime, some startups do not even use any employee performance assessments or evaluations in any way. The performance management process comprises a series of stages where managers and employees monitor performance, manage goals, and evaluate outcomes. Conventional performance management systems adopt a characteristic cadence of quarterly, biannually, or annual reviews. Typical steps within the performance management process include Goal setting. This is more than just hitting specific milestones. Goals empower individuals to collaboratively set team and individual objectives within the evolving business context. Coaching and feedback. Hitting targets may be satisfying, but it is only one thing. How the goals were achieved is equally crucial. This is why business leaders, owners should conduct practices that people can use to seek quality feedback on how they performed and what they can improve on or do better. Performance evaluation. Managers and employees need to be equipped to assess employees' performance. It also has to do with how each employee contributed significantly toward business priorities. This is what informs the next set of objectives. 
Here's how to significantly improve the performance management process. Start slow, most preferably with a single department. Use technology, especially for cascading goals. Keep it simple. Apply everything you learn with continuous performance management to reviews at the end of the year. Use technology to gain veritable insights and spot issues early. Listen to the employees. Start thinking ahead regarding your broader ecosystem. Behavioral approach employees are accessed based on their efforts and behaviors. Behaviors are readily identified and evaluated. This is a suitable approach for giving comprehensive feedback on behaviors and mapping out desirable future behaviors. This approach is also suitable for when it is hard to measure individual outcomes. Excellent examples include support staff, players in a team, and often HR professionals. Result-oriented approach employees are accessed based primarily on objective criteria, focusing only on the output and not the input, especially quantity and quality. This is a suitable approach for several ways to tackle the job. The key is the result and not how the job was done. An excellent example is call center employees who possess specific success metrics for sales professionals. The evaluation of accountants and lawyers is another result-oriented exercise since they track the billable hours. Basic elements for effective performance management The basic elements for effective performance management are relatively simple. Each element is an integral part of good project management, so they should be considered in the same way. Each element is also a great place to start if you are looking to implement new initiatives in your organization. These elements are simple building blocks that can be used to improve standard performance management practices, as well as create new ones from scratch. The elements that will be discussed in this article are the following. Fair processes. Any process must be fair to all people involved and should avoid favoring one side over the other. While necessary for a successful product, any incentives or rewards should also have a basis in fairness so everyone benefits, not just the people being rewarded. Clear objectives. Everyone involved must have a common understanding of what is expected of them, and this should be expressed in clear language so everyone knows their role without any confusion or misinterpretation. This is especially true for performance evaluations, where there can't be room for interpretation. Effective communication. This is a fundamental principle for project management as well as performance management. In short, it simply means that information must be communicated clearly and promptly to all involved parties. This also includes clear processes that everyone can follow, such as how reviews will be conducted or who needs to sign off on an action item after a meeting. Timely reviews. Everyone on a project should have regular feedback so they know where they stand and can see how their performance contributes to the overall success of the project. This is especially true for those who are responsible for milestones or deliverables, as this will help them estimate future efforts more accurately and will also ensure progress is being made. Personal accountability. There should be a strong understanding of individual responsibility, and everyone involved must take ownership if something is not done correctly. This doesn't mean blame needs to be assigned. Rather, this means learning from mistakes so they don't happen again. Two sub-disciplines of performance management Performance management can be divided into two sub-disciplines, Corporate Performance Management, CPM, and People Performance Management, PPM. The former focuses on organizational performance, looking at how objectives are set and measured. The latter focuses on individual or group performance within an organization. Corporate Performance Management CPM, Corporate Performance Management is referred to as Enterprise Performance Management EPM, or Strategic Performance Management SPM, and is crucial to the growth of businesses. One of the most important aspects is to define what corporate performance management means for your organization, and how you and your team will know when you're doing it well. One clear way to do this is by defining the key performance indicators that will measure whether or not you're successfully managing your corporate performance. Once you've got this clear, then it's time to start collecting the data that will measure those KPIs. This can be achieved in a variety of ways, from keeping an eye on project progress to analyzing the number of bugs your team has managed to squash. 
And that's all there is to it. Well, not quite. After you've done all that hard work, it's time to sit down and analyze all the data you've gathered so you can figure out what went well and what didn't. People Performance Management PPM. This is the performance of individual employees and teams, using performance measures to assess performance against operational goals. The process involves setting targets for performance improvement and measuring employee output against these targets. This performance reflects the contribution made by employees working in an area and may be used for performance-related pay purposes.